At first, they thought it was just them, but then they got on the internet and found out they weren't the only ones with the same complaint. I was had vertigo, nausea, migraine the whole way down, the whole way back. Part of it would be like a constant pressure on your ears. You know, like when you're driving and you have one window that you've opened in the back and get that kind of buffeting sound. So it's just that whole thing all wrapped into one. And it's just miserable. For Barb Francis, it all started back in November of 2014. She and her husband paid just over $60,000 for a new 2015 Suburban at Tenoyer Chevrolet in Holland. We loved the car. We still love the car. But when you get in, it's almost like your ears start to hurt after a while. The couple says it got worse after they took their grandchildren on a trip to Florida. Barb and her granddaughter got sick. Does she get car sick on her own? She never did. If she's not in that suburban, she did not get sick. Barb says they brushed it off at first, but the next time they went on a long trip, her husband got sick. And he does not get car sick, does not have, you know, doesn't have that kind of thing. He had vertigo, he had nausea, he had headaches. I thought, we just said, okay, this is weird. It was then that the Francis's searched the words, GM SUV making me sick. Several news articles popped up. Oh my gosh, because who would think that your car is making you sick that way? 13 on your side also discovered numerous complaints to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in both 2015 and 16. They included remarks like severe headaches, experiencing pressure in my ears, and makes me nauseous and dizzy. We decided to test it out ourselves. Because I am prone to motion sickness, I didn't think it was a good idea to go for a ride. So we have our producer, Emma, here, who has never gotten sick in a car before. So what we're going to do is we're going to have her go for a ride, and then she's going to tell us how she feels during and after. With cameras inside to capture all the details, a microphone picks up what many described as that buffeting noise, almost like a window is partially rolled down. I like pressure. You know, like a, um, I don't even know how to, it's just constantly going like this. After about 30 minutes, the test came to an end. We asked Emma how she felt. Midway through, I started to get like a pressure headache. I would say it was sort of like when you're drowsy, that feeling, that's what I had. And like a little bit, just like, it's like tense right here. I didn't have any, like, I didn't have anything with my ears. My ears weren't bugging me, but it was just my head. Barb says she's taken a Suburban back to Denoyer and they made several attempts to fix it. They did the headliner. They changed the canceling system. They drove our car around for 37 days. They put, I think, 720 some miles on it. Major money into this, and it's still not fixed. Well, it puts a dealership in the middle, which is a difficult position because we really value the customer and we value our partnership with the manufacturer as well. Sales manager Dominique DeNoyer says the dealership did offer the family a similar vehicle, but they declined. We're still it's afraid. all the GM products, though. It's the Yukon, it's the Tahoe, it's the Denali's, it's the Escalade, it's all of them. Barb and her husband are paying over $700 a month for the vehicle. At this point, they just want out of the lease. Denoyer says it's not that simple. So the lien is with the bank, and as far as absolving the lease, we don't have the ability because we don't own that contract. The Francis's have now hired a Lemon Law attorney. Several months later, they are still negotiating with GM. The company declined to do an interview and sent us this statement. GM is aware of customers' concerns regarding a buffeting noise in certain previous model year full-size GM utility vehicles. GM does not believe this is a safety issue. The company went on to say if someone has a similar problem, to take it to their GM dealer for potential repair under warranty. Just want to be done with it. Just take it back and be done with it. We're not driving it. Barb says with the help of their attorney, they're working with General Motors on a settlement to buy back the vehicle. In the meantime, they continue making lease payments and the Suburban sits in the driveway. 
And I did ask General Motors several times specifically if the problem has been identified and fixed in later models. They would not directly answer that question and again sent me the statement you saw in my piece.